Hi everyone, Phil from Tech for Techs here. Today we're going to be looking at this Seasonic Focus GX650. It's obviously a 650 watt power supply, but it's also an 80 plus gold, which means it's really efficient. And if you don't know who Seasonic are, well, they're sort of like the mother of all power supplies because basically a lot of the ones what you get on the market which you see made by different manufacturers they're not actually made by those manufacturers they're actually made by these guys and rebranded so we're going to have a look and see how it performs and then we've got links in the description just below if you're interested in purchasing as well as prices as well you looking for a great networking solution? Well, Tender has it all. Finding your BT router no longer has the power? Then try one of these from Tender. Hell yeah! Is the Wi-Fi on your laptop not working and you need a discreet solution? Well then get this from Tender. Hell yeah! Finding the kids can't get Wi-Fi in the bedroom and they're making your life miserable? Well you need to get one of these from Tender. Oh hell yeah! Looking for a low cost solution to get internet into your home office? Then you need to get some of these from Tender. Hell yeah! For all your networking needs, trust Tender. Hell yeah! Okay, so let's have a quick look at the box and go over the specifications. So as you can see, it's sort of a gold and black box. Sort of goes with it being a 80 plus gold rated. It says about 10 year warranty on there. It tells you the model number, which we've already been over. It's fully modular and it's got hybrid fan control in there. It gives you a bit more specifications on this side as well. So that's pretty good. Those specifications include the cables, um, depending on the version of the power supply you got, because there are five different ones. There is a 1000 watt, a 850 watt, a 750 watt, a 650 watt, which we've got here, and a 550 watt. The cable numbers may be slightly different depending on the model, but the main power connection, that's your motherboard 20 slash 24 pin one, that comes with one of those, obviously. It comes with two of the four plus four or eight pin connections, what you power your CPU with, you usually go to the top left of your motherboard. Depending on the power supply, it's also got between two and six PCIe cables, that's for your graphics cards. The 1000 watt, 850 watt come with six, the 750, 650 come with four, and the 550 comes with two. They've all got 10 SATA connections. The 750, 650 and 550 come with three Molexes, where the 850 and 1000 watt come with five, and then it comes with two Molex to SATA 3.3 adapters as well in there, which gives you a rough idea. So it's fully modular cable design, it's compact size, it's a 120 millimeter fluid dynamic bearing fan, you've got Seasonic hybrid silent fan control and you've got highly reliable Japanese 105 degrees Celsius aluminium capacitors in there and you've got tight voltage regulations and cable free connection design blah 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 multi GPU support and all that but on the back it also shows you how efficient it is and all your different things there each model is going to be probably slightly different depending on the wattage you're using and that's pretty much it for the box. Okay, so we've got the contents of the box, and there seems to be a lot of wastage to me, if you ask me. Yes, there is a piece of card or paper or whatever it is in there about the coronavirus effort, and they've had to take non-woven materials out to make face masks and stuff like that, but it just seems to be a little bit far-fetched if they've replaced like a, a, a bag, and presuming that's what it is, what were the cables were in, with two plastic bags for the cables. So basically, yes, they're helping with coronavirus, but they're gonna help pollute the seas and stuff. Mm. Kill us one way or kill us the other, if you ask me on that one. Uh, then you've got another bag, what the power supply came in. On top of that, you've got four pieces of paper, or well, I say pieces of paper, you've got one about gift vouchers, you've got another one about the coronavirus thing we just said, you've got an installation guide, and then you've got a manual on top of that. Why do you need four? It's just a little bit too much. You should just have a QR code in there, 
you can scan the QR code, it'll take you to the website, it'll give you this information on the website which you can update and so forth, then you wouldn't have to open it up and stick all these daft bits of card and paper in there. So make sure you're using QR codes instead. Uh, I know so you may have to put some bits in for regulations, but that can be put on a little piece of card with a QR code saying, you want to see the manual, scan this. Saves you money, it saves the environment, uh, it saves the consumer, and it saves all this wastage. On top of that, you've got the foam, which I understand foam inside there to protect the power supply, that's fine. But on top of that, you've got cable ties in a plastic bag. You've got more ties in, believe it or not, a plastic bag. And then you've got screws in a plastic bag, which were inside the other plastic bag with the cable ties. So there's a lot of wastage there, if you ask me. Um, I know we're reviewing the power supply, but we just see so much plastic. And the reason I go on about it is because we're doing all these reviews. The amount of rubbish we have to chuck away afterwards when we're uh, uh, doing them is unbelievable. Uh, and sometimes the products, there's more plastic rubbish than there is actual product. Right, let's go back into it. So we've got a power cable. You've got a tester or a powerer. It's not really a tester as such because it doesn't tell you if the voltages are right, but it'll basically power the power supply up if you connect it up to the 24 pin connection uh, and it'll just power it just to show that it works. And then you've got all the different cables, which we'll go in a bit more into depth in a few seconds. Okay, so we've got all the cables here. First of all, we've got your 20 slash 24 pin cable which again not many people use 20 pin these days i'd be surprised if anyone does but you've got that there you can see it is braided so it's got like a sort of a sheen on the actual braiding uh, so it's a little bit shiny but otherwise uh, that's pretty good there's no colors on the end or anything so it is all black which is good especially if you color code in your pc otherwise the rest of the cables are pretty straightforward they are flat black cables which basically means the cable is exactly that it is flat so it's flat to the table for example let me just show you if i can get this cable tie off the cable itself is flat so that makes it very aerodynamic so and it also makes it easy to do your cable routing inside your pc which is really good and obviously the black bit means well it's black it's pretty straightforward and again same with all the other cables there are no multi colors or anything like that it's all pretty straightforward and standards which is pretty good the do have these adapter cables. I'm never a fan of adapter cables, which change Molex to SATA connections. I'm not really sure we need those anyway, because it comes with a total of 10 SATA connections anyway, according to the box. So why you'd need an adapter to make even more, that seems a little bit over the top to me, but hey, uh, that's how it goes. But you do have plenty of connectors there. Okay, so let's have a look at the power supply itself. Before we do that though, the actual power cable which you plug in here and then plug into your wall is 1.5 meters long. So it's sort of an adequate size. Prefer a little bit bigger to be honest with you, but it's better than uh, uh, some of the models we've seen in the past. Uh, so let's have a quick look at it. So first of all, we've got the fan on the front, so or on the top should I say, or the bottom, depending on which way you've got it facing. Uh, you can see the 12 centimeter fan there. It does have seven blades, it looks all right. There is a nice sticker in the middle, but nothing too fancy on there. The sides, which is good, this is the side if you've got a window in your case, you will be looking at, uh, well either that side or that side, depending on how your case is actually designed, uh, but as you can see it has got some nice writing on there with a little bit of a design there as well, rather than looking at specifications, which you get with a lot of power supplies. Talking about specifications, they're on the top part, which is here, so you've got all your specs there, so that's pretty good, so everything you need to do now is there. This bit, in most cases, is usually hidden, so you're not going to see that anyway, which is pretty good. On the back side of it, which is where obviously you stick your power cable uh, you've got obviously the seasonic name there you've got obviously where you put your power cable you've got a rocker switch on and off and you've also got the hybrid mode button there so you press that and it goes in or out depending on how you want it hybrid mode on or off 
On the other side is where obviously you put all your cables, so depending on what cable you want them to plug in and what you need for your motherboard, you get your cable, you get the PSU end, and basically you find where it fits is the basics to it, so this one is 8 pins, so it tells you here which ones go where, but basically a one with 8 pins goes in the holes with believe it or not, eight holes in it. Um, so you basically just push it in there and it clips in and there's your cable in nice and secure. So then you can just basically plug in the ones you need or don't plug in the ones you don't need, it's simple as that. Okay, so we've got the power supply all set up with our power supply tester. We're using the Ferbotake Dr. Power 2. This is the best one what we've used. If Seasonic want to send us their own, then feel free, they can do. But we find this the most accurate what we've used out of all the testing. We're going to be running the fan on the power supply on the standard mode rather than the uh, hybrid mode, which basically means hybrid, means that if you're not using a lot of power and it's not getting very hot, then the fan doesn't work until it gets to a certain load and then the fan kicks in and then starts cooling it down. So what I'm going to do now is turn the power supply on. And there you go, you see the screen goes on to sort of a standby which is a blue. As soon as I press the button on the side you'll see the fan start spinning and we'll get some numbers on the screen. There we go. Now bear in mind that 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of a volt is absolutely fine. Um, that's pretty standard, so as long as it's in those numbers it's fine. And at this point the 5 volt rail is giving us 4.9, the 12 volt is giving us 11.8, the 3.3 .3 is giving us 3.2, and again the 12 volt is giving us 12.1, uh, the 5 is giving us dead on 5. So those numbers are within reason, they're okay, there's nothing wrong with that. It's not the most closest to the exact numbers we've seen but still not pretty bad to be honest with you uh, and that just turns itself off after a few seconds obviously to stop it overheating but there you go that's pretty much it so it passes those tests and we're going to hook it up to a pc and just make sure it can power that machine on a long stress test Thank you for watching this video everyone, it's really appreciated you made it all the way to the end. Please make sure you subscribe, like, comment and even click that bell so you get notifications of new videos and live streams. It does help support the channel and supporting the channel basically means that we can release more content for you and also better quality content going forward. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.